I have a confession. Too often, I feel like my closest relationship is with my smartphone. I'm gonna need you guys to admit if you have this confession as well by raising your hand and tell the truth, yeah? And keep your hands up. Sometimes the things I do on it aren't so smart. <laughs> keep them up. All right, we're all honest in here, thank you. So now that we're all in the same boat, I wanna ask you as well, has this happened to you? You're with a friend or even a family member. You're sitting down and they pull out their smartphone. They text, tweet, follow, whatever they're doing. They're basically telling you that something or someone is more interesting or important than you. Or even worse, if they pull out their phone and then just mindlessly scroll. In that situation, they're telling anything or anyone is more important than you. They just haven't found it yet. Now, this may be a personal problem. You guys might just not be that interesting. It happens to me all the time. But it's usually a result of poor phone etiquette. Many schools ban smartphones entirely or banish them to lockers. And for students that are caught on the gram at school, there are so many punishments, detention, maybe even suspensions. Are smartphones the forbidden fruit of education? Is this the right approach? Is banning smartphones from classrooms the answer? I want to suggest no. But before I do, you guys were so great and honest in the first round, we're going to bring back confession time real quick. Same rules as last time, okay? So if you're at an event, like here, or in class, and you're asked to turn off your phone, do you maybe just keep it on silent instead? Okay, yeah, me too. Point here isn't to make us feel bad, but the point is really to see we don't really follow smartphone bans. So the question here is how do we turn it from a forbidden fruit into an educational essential? I believe it starts with the users. Students, I have some news for you. If you're not a fan of the smartphone ban, you have the power to change it. Seriously, bans simply exist because of how we choose to use our phones. We need to radically rethink the job that our smartphones are fulfilling. Do you know that American teens spend an average of nine hours in front of a screen a day? Nine hours, that's longer than a school day. And there's a theory, the 10,000 hour theory, that if you spend 10,000 hours of quote, deliberate practice, you can become an expert in a field. So if you're spending nine hours a day, you're well on your way to becoming an expert. But the question is, what are you becoming an expert in? Don't worry, I have a way of finding that out. If you know your battery usage on your phone, you know the place in settings that tells you how much of a percentage of battery is allocated towards your usage. Well, yeah, that part, if you pull it up and social media and gaming apps make up over half of that, congratulations. You're probably a gift guru, you're a filter fanatic, or you probably noticed, and don't lie, if someone didn't like your last post. <laughs> We're all kind of guilty of that, right? It was just me, thank you, thank you, some support there. But honestly, is that a good use of your time? Let's think about it. If you're spending half of your smartphone usage, so let's just say for example purposes, that's five hours a day on social media and gaming apps, that's 2,000 hours a year, over 75 days. 75 days of mindless consumption. So in four years of high school, you spend nearly a year I'm looking at you guys, sorry. You spend nearly a year on social media and gaming apps. What could you be doing instead? Using those same five hours a day, according to a study done by the linguist, you can learn a language in 90 days. So in those five hours throughout the whole entirety of high school, you can learn possibly up to three different languages. Two vastly different results, all on the same device, your smartphone. Time is the greatest commodity, take it for granted. So value it. You can use your screen time to learn a couple languages, be up to date on SAT prep, learn how to code, apply for scholarships. It's really endless, and you can also stay up to date on social media. If we utilized our smartphones productively, do you think bans could be reconsidered? I advocate most definitely. Students, I encourage you to take, make a deliberate decision to change your smartphone usage. Okay, it, it sounds great, right? But too often we've all set goals and we've fallen short. So if we're gonna make a serious change and try to change our smartphone behavior, it's worth understanding a little bit of science, the psychology behind our smartphone use. 
So let's be real. It feels good when you post something and your likes blow up, right? That means getting a lot of likes for us, isn't it? Social media produces dopamine, which actually produces pleasure in the brain. But there are other ways to get the same feeling. I'm a co-founder of an app called Kudzu that embraces the same stimulation for education. Students are able to submit their report cards, good grades, academic achievements, and good habits to get a currency that they can redeem for real-time rewards. But away from your phone, exercise and meditation also releases these. If you're not into that, eating chocolate does too. <laughs> yes, right? If you don't have a sweet tooth, so does chili peppers. And last but not least, philanthropy releases these happiness chemicals. A study done by Stony Brook University actually calls this giver's glow. So smartphones are not the only way to produce this feel-good energy. It's the most convenient way, but it might not be the best way. Dr. Jean Twenge actually found that eighth graders who are heavy users of social media have a 27% higher risk of depression, while eighth graders who exceeded the average time spent playing sports, hanging out with friends in person, and even doing homework had a significantly lower risk. So social media may affect how we feel about ourselves, but did you know that you, as users, have a lot more power than you realize? What you post affects how others feel about themselves, so please, when you use it, please post responsibly. There's a reason why social media juggernauts rely on user-generated content. It's powerful. The feeds are curated by you. The algorithms that decide what you see and the ads you see are determined by you. Even the app updates designed down to the color schemes are based on usage, feedback, and interactions on these applications. So students, cell phone users, whether you know it or not, you have major influence. Put simply, your choices will either fuel or rid the stigma against smartphones. So use smartphones with self-awareness, use them in a way that is time well spent, and get help to use them productively. Okay, so we covered mostly from the student perspective, but I know, I know, we want to cover this from the perspective of educators. I can feel the energy staring over here. <laughs> so as educators, you help shape our future generation. You prepare students for the workforce and to contribute to society. But what does this future look like? Technology is already ubiquitous. Smartphones are used by businesses for effective marketing, management, communications, and operations. And today's students will inherit an even more connected world, an even more technologically savvy world, an even more fast-paced world than ever before. The speed of change is only getting faster. According to NYU's professor Scott Galloway, it took the telephone 75 years to reach 50 million users. It took the TV 14 years, the internet took four years, and just 35 days for Angry Birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see someone, an Angry Bird fan in the crowd. Okay. Oh, you don't want to admit it now? Okay. Nice, nice. <laughs> in this digital age, change is really the only constant. The workforce is expected to master tools that may not have existed even a year ago. And using smartphones effectively will be a crucial, if not the crucial, life skill. We really can't prepare students for a technologically driven world without technology. And we can't prepare students for a smartphone driven world without smartphones. Now I know what most of you and or some of you are thinking, we need to ban smartphones because they're a major distraction. In fact, when we look at reasons for smartphone bans, a common word used is distraction. But just because something is a distraction doesn't mean it should be banned. Bear with me on this, but back in my day, this was a form of communication. Some of you may not know what this is because it's now extinct, <laughs> but it's a handwritten note, and we would communicate with friends and yeah, even crushes with it. Do you know what we used to write it? A pen and paper. <laughs> this, you could think, is a distraction as it took away from our studies, but have any schools banned pen and paper? Not to the best of my knowledge. The question is why? Because a pen and paper's value to the learning process considerably outweighs its potential for distraction. It's the same thing with smartphones. Smartphones can really help the learning process. And distractions aren't necessarily bad. 
A distraction is just a thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. A lot of innovation happens at the verge. Distractions are a way of helping us draw connections between seemingly unrelated concepts. Being interrupted can help us see things in new ways. And it's not just me who thinks so. Jesse Stommel, the director of teaching and learning at University of Mary Washington, has found that distractions are necessary for, quote, peak learning experiences, like making connections, having epiphanies, and understanding abstract concepts. I learned the power of a meaningful distraction from one of my students in a class I used to teach in West Philadelphia. It was a class on entrepreneurship, and as an older millennial, uh, I was quickly humbled to realize I no longer knew what was cool. So any chance I got, I loved getting feedback from this next generation, the younger millennials, as well as Generation Z. I asked them what kind of rewards they wanted to see on Kudzu. And as I turned around from the whiteboard, I noticed one student just completely disengaged from the activity. He was scrolling through his phone, so teachers, naturally, you know what I did. I called on him. <laughs> as he looked up, he was on Instagram, and he landed on the NBA page. So he sarcastically blurted out, I would love to meet LeBron James. Any other situation that would have called for a well, uh, thanks for chiming in, I'll call his agent. But in this situation, it actually inspired us to provide experiential rewards on the Kudzu app. Now, corporate tours, celebrity meet and greets, as well as once in a lifetime experiences can all be redeemed on Kudzu thanks to this distraction. Now, I'm not saying smartphones should be used all the time. If technology is integrated in the classroom, it's really important to designate time for students to unplug. This allows students to recognize that it's useful to learn different things at different times in different ways. Isn't this really the type of metacognitive learning that true learning is all about? Some time unplugged can also make phones an even more effective in-class tool when they're used. Students can use their smartphones to look up a confusing term, like I do all the time, like with metacognitive. I learned it means thinking about thinking. Uh, students can post a survey on social media and quickly collect primary data from their peers when it has to do with a classroom discussion. They can also submit a group project via the cloud. Smartphones can also help to improve students' productivity in other ways. They allow bite-sized learning or micro-learning approaches. Students can engage with their coursework anytime, anywhere. This, according to a study done by Energizing Learning, means that knowledge is more easily learned, reinforced, and retained with the help of mobile learning. In addition, software can enable homework to dynamically adapt to the needs of different students. If a student is struggling in a certain area, the software can detect that and automatically give students more help in that area. And teachers can see this in real time and track students' progress. So smartphones can be beneficial for teachers too. By helping students achieve educational outcomes, creativity, productivity, knowledge retention, and by allowing tracking and targeting. So it's really time to reconsider smartphone bans. Why not redirect the energy spent reprimanding students for phone use towards re-engaging students via phone use, towards speaking to students when, where, and how they want to be spoken to? It wouldn't be the first time a ban is reconsidered. Just a couple decades ago, the Great Gatsby and the Catcher in the Rye weren't allowed in some schools. Smartphone bans are a huge missed opportunity. Young people want their phones, and we all remember being a kid, being told not to do something was usually the best motivation to do something. Why not harness that drive for good? Plus, if we embrace smartphones in education, it'll unleash innovation. Entrepreneurs will develop even more ways to help teachers. This is the kind of innovation we need. Okay, that may be biased because like most entrepreneurs, I tend to think I have the next big idea quite often. It's probably not a surprise. But this delusion is often sobered by my big brother, who's great ballet class of 2004 and also a high school English teacher. He has the not so enviable task of entertaining my ideas, but he also has the artful talent of bringing me back down to reality. It's important for entrepreneurs to continue trying to think of new ways related to education. But those ideas need to be about supporting teachers, not adding to their workload. At Kudzu, we refuse to say we are disrupting education. We like to say we're empowering it. What needs disruption is society's obsession with disruption. To wrap up, in the past, a mark of an educated person was how much they knew. 
In the future, the mark of an educated person will be how much they admit they don't know and how they can access, filter, and learn new information. Now, it may be easier said than done, but from my experience, here are a couple takeaways. Educators, please consider how technology can add value to your dynamic classroom. Hold EdTech to a higher standard. Change it from being an extra tab on your computer to something that bridges the communication and engagement gaps with your students. Students, you have the responsibility to turn your smartphone into a resource. The power is in your choice in how you allocate your valuable time. Take control of the content you consume and produce. It's called user-generated content for a reason. Be mindful of its impact. And let's be real, we're all still going to probably use social media. May I just ask that you don't compare your life to the highlight reel on the feed from friends and celebrities. They don't post the pimple they just got or a test they failed. They post their best selves. So be kind to yourself. Find fulfillment in who you are, not what you swipe. I'm a proud product of this school. I attended Great Valley K through 12. I'm class of 2008. And here at GV, we have the privilege of having supportive teachers who believe in us. And if we work hard, we get access to opportunities. I may not have known my purpose when I was here, but thanks to teachers like Mrs. Keating and Mr. McGrath, good habits and drive were instilled. I didn't have the burden that my successes or failures would impact my household. So I'm gonna leave you with a quick story. Students, your generation, Generation Z, get a bad rap. You're known as the 140 character generation that are glued to their smartphones. And yes, you are digital natives, but you're also savvy, you're innovative, and most of all, you're selfless. We had a student who had been asking for a particular word on our app, Kudzu. By asking, I mean tweeting, DMing, emailing numerous times a day. <laughs> when we finally post the reward, she redeemed it. It was a $100 gift card to Walmart, which takes at least a semester of very high engagement to earn. We were really proud that she achieved her goal, but a couple days later, she tweeted this picture. She had given her gift card to her parents for groceries. We didn't realize it at the time that she was asking, but she actually utilized her smartphone and her academic achievements to treat her parents and bring joy to her home. In conclusion, Let's harness the power of smartphone distractions for good. Let us lessen mindless consumption and feed mindful consumption. Let's utilize education technology as assets rather than liabilities. And let's give people the tools they need to succeed. As Steve Jobs said, technology is nothing. What's important is that you have faith in people, that they're basically good and smart, and if you give them tools, they'll do wonderful things. So take your tool, and do wonderful things. Thank you.